Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Carmina and I'm your moderator for today's event. We have about 40 minutes of great content prepared for you with 10 minutes for questions at the end. Now on to the presentation. Thank you, Shin. The floor is now yours. Hello, my name is Sang Gyo Shin, 5G Technical Lead of Design Engineering Software Group in Kisite. Today's presentation will address the modeling principle of 5G new radio systems physical layer. We will start by looking at the concept of model-based system design and fabrication. Then, we are going to talk about the three practical 5G system modeling cases from millimeter wave beamformer and array antenna, and simulation-based 3GPP over layer test, and lastly, about the circuit envelope simulation technique. I hope today's topics will be useful for you. The cell phone comprises analog electronics as well as digital circuits ranging from processors to display, camera and power electronics like the picture shown here. In addition to this, the 5G smartphones contain many circuitries, each of which is carefully designed to optimize its performance. With the new architecture, integrating both sub-6 gigahertz and millimeter wave modules in a size-constrained mobile platform. The additional design challenges such as intermodulation distortion in dual connectivity operation, high temperature and desensitization from internally generated various noises needed to be modeled and resolved before hardware implementation. Motor-based design is a proven concept that addresses many 5G physical layer design challenges by analyzing the system performance of the new architecture using the realistic component specification in a system level simulation. The goal of a model-based design is to abstract hardware behavior from design details and utilize them across the entire design workflow, from only phase system architecting to the final hardware implementation and verification the various types of models, such as measurement-based to the mathematically abstracted, they represent aggregate concepts into representative blocks. There are different levels of models being developed and used from device-level circuit simulation to the system-level behavioral simulation. Especially for the system-level simulation, engineers can focus on functionality by removing the implementation details. Here is a good example of model-based design for millimeter wave header, which is one of our company's 5G test and measurement product. The radio frequency section of the system is one of the crucial parts containing all the transmitter and receiver circuits. Specifically, a millimeter wave broadband IQ modulator and demodulators are commonly used for direct conversion designs. A schematic shows a high-level transmitter architecture utilizing millimeter wave IQ modulator integrated with the filter bank and the balanced amplifier using hybrid couplers. This is a kind of RF system architecture model that calculates basic RF link budget and diagnoses the source of analog impairments such as spurious frequency mixing and mismatch that is usually ignored by the spread suite. This level of design gives an RF architect a good insight about the topologies and target specification in only development phase. Based on the initial system specification, circuit engineers design transistor-level components and subsystems accordingly. Then, they extract various types of the hardware models, such as X promise and S promise to be used for circuit and system level simulation before hardware implementation. Let's have a look how the model based design applied for digital signal processing in the example. This is a part of 5G new radio baseband modem. In the upper block, the information base are channel coded with low density parity check encoder then they are mapped to a various type of modulation scheme. The symbols are then mapped to different layers for the physical data shared channel. 
some of the control and system information are polar encoded and multiplex with primary and secondary synchronization reference signals to compose a SS and PBCH plot. Finally, all the channels and the signals defined in 3GPP standard 38.211 and 38.212 are composed into 5G new radio downlink OFTM symbols. This is a reference digital signal processing algorithm IP that 5G baseband system engineers and modern designers can utilize for vector level interoperability tests before they move to the specific hardware implementation with FPGA or ASIC. Now that we have reviewed the general concept of model-based design, let me introduce a realistic 5G phase-away system modeling example in the next section. This is a system design of the 5mm wave phase array IC utilizing model-based design technique. Looking at the schematic, a millimeter wave signal is coming into the input of the beam forming IC and then it is split into an 8x8 phase array chain moving toward to the phase array antenna to the right. The beam angle is dynamically changed by controlling the phase value using the phase shifter shown in the middle of the schematic. The three-dimensional beam directivity pattern and two-dimensional pie cut are displayed at the right. The active impedance are changing at the all 64 antenna elements input and the shows and the software shows the analysis result immediately during the simulation run with beam angle change. Before real hardware implementation, this level of the system modeling is very important, especially when the system complexity is very high, such as 5G. Let me introduce how I modeled each subcomponent of the entire phase array system step by step in the next slide. First, let's model an array antenna. For the millimeter wave 5G application, we designed a reference antenna array which contains a dual polarized MIMO and beamforming technique. In this electromagnetic design process, a less than 3 mm by 3 mm size antenna element supporting 20, 28 holes is designed here with dual probe feed structure for dual polarization. The size of the patch is swept to see the change of resonance frequency supporting required bandwidth. The port location is also swept to see the impedance change and find the best location. Then, an element performance is evaluated by generating 2D and 3D patterns. The array is designed by placing four base elements with multi-layers of the substrate the characteristic of the antenna pattern is evaluated by placing into a phone housing. Finally, the antenna far field pattern and scattering parameters between each antenna ports are generated for system level performance in analysis. Many antenna designers are often likely to finish their antenna design project by completing electromagnetic simulation and measurement in an anechoic chamber. However, many technical challenges coming from a millimeter wave 5G antenna system that closely integrated with beamforming IC don't allow them to finish off only. Now, they need to work more to resolve the system level problems. I'd like to introduce a phased array system modeling example that antenna designer and arc system architect working together. This graphical model and individual components represent our upstreacher, amplitude taper, phase shifter, power amplifier, and array antenna quite intuitively. Even though the connection between the components is represented with single line, it can represent any number of the RF chains by assigning a specific number in the software. 
If you look at the antenna ray model in the right, the fossil patterns and S parameters data generated from electromagnetic simulation are imported into the antenna model in this frequency domain article system simulator. The traditional model based design has been using mathematically defined behavioral models. But in this case, the array antenna characteristics are represented by extracted S parameters and file patterns. Like this approach, Mixing various types of base array subcomponent models and realistic antenna characteristics is a beauty of model-based design concept and help antenna designer and ARP architect to address various problems that comes from combined antenna and beamformer IC. Let's talk about the power amplifier. The phase array system includes a multi-channel power amplifiers that can control the gain for individual chain, but with minimal phase variation. Design a power amplifier circuit and understanding system level behavior is an important task of 5G system design. To learn about the method of evaluation of a system performance of the circuit, I'd like to introduce a device characterization technique called X parameter. The X parameter is characterizing the linear and nonlinear circuit behaviors of the RF component in a more robust and complete manner. In effect, X parameters are the mathematically correct superset of X parameters, applicable to both large signal and small signal conditions for linear and nonlinear components. X parameters are cascadable just like S parameters so that higher levels of the integration can be simulated or characterized. The Smith chart shows the overlaid contour of a power added efficiency and deliver the power, which are derived from circuit level harmonic balance simulation of the power amplifier and X parameter model. We can find good correlation between the model and the circuit. Therefore, the extracted X parameter data has been used as a behavioral model in simulation by experienced system engineers who want to handle the long term memory effect and nonlinear circuit behavior. In this slide, let's apply an extracted X parameter data to the phase array system level simulation using the circuit link model. It uses a nonlinear circuit simulation technique called a harmonic balance to evaluate the sub-circuit that includes the imported X parameter data. From this approach, the circuit designer can verify his or her power amplifier's functional requirements, while system engineers can achieve the system level performance estimation with increased accuracy. In addition to the X parameters, S parameters is another physical basis model for most of the linear devices. Using S parameters as a replacement of the ideal behavioral models provide a highly realistic phase array system modeling because the numerous electrical properties of the network of the components are expressed using S parameters, such as gain, return loss, voltage standing wave ratio, reflection coefficient, and amplifier stability. So, the RF splitter, attenuator, and phase shifters models can be replaced by S parameter model shown in this example. Now, let's discuss about coupling paths. Coupling between the elements in the array has a significant effect on the element's impedance and change the radiation pattern of the array. Traditionally, the system engineers are modeling the coupling effect using an ideal coupling matrix in a closed form of equation. However, it does not represent a realistic coupling effect. Because of this limitation, S parameter based coupling effect representation method has been used for a long time as an alternative by many phase array system designers. Generating coupling matrix using S parameters from the electromagnetic simulation of the antenna array design 
is now quite common methodology characterizing the effect. The slide shows extracted as promised from a 4x4 28 GHz array antenna design that create a 16x16 16 -16 matrix. Let's extend our discussion to the scan impedance. Circuit and antenna designers addressing the coupling effect in the circuit and electromagnetic simulation environment with limited source excitation control capability. Sometimes they combine circuit and EM simulation tools together to explore coupling related design issues such as active input impedance. The active impedance or scan impedance is the input impedance of each antenna elements in an array when all elements are excited. It actively changes by different phases of the input signals to the antenna elements and also couple the signals from the other elements. We can think about few methods to measure these impedances. From the electromagnetic simulation, we can measure this by applying amplitude and phase for all scan angles. However, it requires additional script development for post-processing in most cases of existing electromagnetic tools, and it is not of primary interest. I'd like to introduce a more practical approach using x promise shown in the second method. The figure shows an equivalent current and voltage representation of an array. We can treat the array as a multiple network and characterize the interaction between the array elements using S primers. An active reflection coefficient in a specific scan angle can be derived by S parameter matrix as shown at the equation. Then, this reflection coefficient can be utilized again for finding active input impedance at the element. Based on the theoretical background, Let's measure the active input impedance in a phase array system scanning the beam in the next page. In my reference phase array system model shown in the schematic, the S parameters and popular patterns files are imported from the electromagnetic simulation. As the scan angle increased, we can see the less power goes to the main load and more energy goes to the side load. It also has less directivity and wider beam width. It is a normal effect of a scan angle change that makes it difficult for the system engineer to measure the scan impedance of a phase array. As, as all elements must be properly excited either in transmit or receive. However, in my system level simulation, you can analyze the active input impedance instantaneously with beam scanning. The graph in the left bottom corner shows that the x-axis rep represents an index number of each antenna element, and the y-axis is the active input impedance shown in the blue and phase shown in the red. Now, we must use the measured impedance value in our design to ensure our array functions correctly. The knowing the active impedance of each element we must match it to, we can include a matching section in the input to each element. It also helps to calculate a set of source excitations that result in the correct current values on the array elements when mutual coupling is considered. Moving to the next section, I'd like to introduce a simulation-based over-the-air measurement method. First of all, let's review some of the basic definition of the array and the beam to understand the 3GPP test requirements better. The example beam pattern shown here is from a traditional base station subarray antenna, configured with 8 by 2 elements placed into YZ plane, then board side directed to X axis. The total field of an array is a vector superposition of the fields, rated by the individual elements as described in a function v, while theta and phi are the elevation and azimuth angles. 
The way vector for steering the main beam is also described in function w here. From these functions, we can define the composite antenna pattern as a multiplication of superposition and weight vectors of the individual elements in an array, added by an element pattern in a specific beam angle. Beamforming can help cellular base station that identifies the most efficient data delivery route to a user, and it reduces interference from nearby users in the process. For millimeter wave cellular signal, they are easily blocked by objects and tend to weaken over long distance. In this case, beamforming can help by focusing a signal in a concentrated beam that points only in the direction of a user rather than broadcasting in many directions. Beamforming is most, li most likely be used by 5G network. Therefore, understanding the antenna array theory is essential for most engineers who start 5G system modeling. Second of all, let's take a look at different types of measurement grid suggested by the 3GPP standard. The various grid types are suggested to support beam peak search determine the spherical coverage performance, and total rated power measurement. One of the base types called the constant set size grid distribute the azimuth and elevation angles uniformly in two dimensions and project each measurement point into the 3D sphere as shown in figure one. The constant density grid is aimed to make the measurement points evenly distributed on the surface of the sphere as shown in the right. I utilize the charged particle implementation methods to project the points to the sphere. A typical conducted RF measurement does not require this. But now you need to understand the concept of the measurement grid for radiator 5G system performance analysis. Now, I want to introduce one of my reference designs for the FR2 base station radiator transmitter characteristics analysis. This design includes many types of hardware modeling components, from baseband modem to RF transmitter, beamforming IC with a ring antenna and over-the-air test chamber. The leftmost component in the schematic represents a reference 5G new radio modem which is written in C++ format. Using these components, I specify the specific channel parameters defined in 3GPP base station conformance test spec 30.141. A 5G downlink waveform with test model 3.1, 60 kHz subcarrier spacing, 100 MHz bandwidth is generated out of the 5G modem component. This waveform up converted into 28 GHz carrier frequency using the modulator model that is shown in the middle of the schematic. Moving forward to the right, the signal passes through the phase array transmitter with a fixed beam direction. The following component named OTATX is developed to model the virtual anaphylic chamber and probe antenna. Then finally, the EVM measurement model calculates the error vector magnitude and the result is displayed in the schematic. The measured EVM minus 123 dBm in this example seems too good to be true. Yes, but it is intended. I wanted to create a kind of reference test bench by modeling a transmitter array using a very ideal behavior model. Let's replace this model with a realistic hardware representation using X and X parameters as we learned about the previous section. This kind of system modeling approach will help a lot of design challenges that 5G millimeter wave product developers are suffering from. At the next reference design, I aim to analyze the performance of the FR2 mobile device receiver with the configuration of fixed reference channel table number 22, defined in 3GPP 38.521 specification. 
One of the key receiver performance metrics is the reference sensitivity. With changing receiver input power level, the receiver needs to show the throughput performance more than 95%. The input level, the throughput is decreasing below 95% is the level of the reference sensitivity of your receiver. Like in the previous example, let's replace the ideal behavior model to a circuit-based model. Then you can see the throughput decreased down to 80%, in which you need to enhance the performance of your receiver design. Let's think about more complex test cases that require the additional adjacent channel signals and unwanted interfering signals in the incident wave. They are the test cases for adjacent channel selectivity and blocking characteristics. In the real components test configuration, you need to prepare a set of instruments, including base station emulator, vector signal generators, and RF cables, and other accessories. In this type of software simulation-based system model, you can simplify and add any number of additional RF signals, whether it is wanted or unwanted, by drawing another RF signal chain into the schematic. Sometimes, very experienced system architects develop software models representing a real-world communication link scenario, such as a dual polarized MIMO. The base station transmitter and receiver units with an array antenna system supporting vertical and horizontal beams were designed using the previously mentioned RF system modeling techniques. The UE side hardware is modeled as shown in the right by integrating 2 mm wave modules and applying maximum rate signal combining and switched beamforming technique. Between base station and UE, I added a millimeter wave channel model defined in 3GPP 38.901 specification and it provides a standard based wireless propagation channel characteristics into my system level simulation. To represent a realistic array antenna performance, I also added electromagnetic simulator generated file patterns into the model. Then, you can test your system with various real world scenario by changing the number of transmit streams and the diversity combining techniques. I want to share the reference simulation design today because of the high complexity of the schematic. But if you are really interested in driving it by yourself, you can get them from latest system view installer, which is a communication system simulator from Kitlight. In the last section, I'd like to discuss about how the circuit envelope based models can help system engineers to solve the various problems. To talk about the circuit envelope model, I brought up an application called envelope tracking. The envelope tracking technology has been used for 3G and 4G mobile devices and even for base station modules to lower power consumption and reduce heat generation. As power efficiency and heat issues are one of the key technical challenges for 5G devices, I thought it was the best topic to introduce the circuit envelope models. A conventional RF amplifier designed with a fixed supply voltage operates most efficiently only when operating in compression. Power amplifier output power versus efficiency curve shows that the higher the output power of the amplifier, the higher the efficiency will be. With time variant modulated input signal at peak level, the amplifier requires a full supply voltage to be able to deliver the required power without running into compression but during the period of a lower signal, this voltage is not required, and it means that power is dissipated in the device. In an envelope tracking enabled system, the modulated drain voltage applied to the arc power amplifier is continuously adjusted to ensure that the amplifier is operating at peak efficiency 
for power required at each instance of transmission. An envelope tracking procedure with a power amplifier circuit design shown in this slide was developed a long time ago, and it has been used as a reference ETPA verification test bench by many PA designers. From left to bottom of the schematic, a modulated arc signal is divided into two arc paths. One is connected at the input of the circuit level power amplifier module, and the other is demodulated to calculate the amplitude of the input envelope signal. Then, a drain bias voltage is generated by using a bias shaping table extracted from a harmonic balance simulation with a constant gain. As a result, we could analyze the power efficiency of the envelope tracking power amplifier. Additionally, the time difference between the input signal and the bias modulator output signal can be simulated by adding a time delay model. The slow rate of the drain bias input can be modeled by using an OPM model easily. Like this example, the PA designers have been benefited by this kind of a well-established circuit design and evaluation software environment. The 5G base station and mobile system integrator don't have this type of a useful software environment as they usually don't develop power amplifier directly. In general, the system engineers are spending a significant amount of time to develop a homebrew simulation tool. Otherwise, they must explore many evaluation kits provided by component vendors, even in early research phase. A system simulation model shown here is developed by taking an approach similar to the one that I introduced in the previous radiator transmitter test example. The 5G uplink waveform created and upconverted to an RF transmit signal. The RF signal separated into two outputs, the bias voltage and time synchronized RF signal, passing through my behavioral ETIC model. The power amplifier on the right is a kind of extracted model created from a circuit design tool that we reviewed in the previous page. We call this a fast circuit envelope model. Using a hardware extracted model for system level engineering is a very practical approach, especially for the system integrators who cannot get circuit design data from component vendors due to IP exposure issue. This simulation example shows the difference of the output spectrum and power added efficiency between fixed bias applied case and envelope tracking enabled case. Again, some experienced engineers may bring a new idea of this methodology already. Yes, you can use this engineering approach for other similar applications such as digital free distortion and cross factor reduction. The circuit based extracted models described in the table provide you with much more realistic hardware behavior, such as non linearity, for your 5G physical layer system modeling. Most of them re represent the various effects with some of the limitations, but generally they are very practical when you cannot get real circuit, de circuit design data. If you have a real circuit design data available, using cold simulation technique between system and circuit level simulator are recommended method. The circuit envelope simulator combines the features of time and frequency domain representation offering a fast and complete analysis of complex signals such as digitally modulated RF signals. Briefly, this simulator permits input waveform to be represented in the frequency domain as RF carrier with modulation envelopes that are represented in the time domain. Therefore, knowing circuit envelope simulation technique and the characteristics of extracted envelope parameter is important for most 5G system design engineers. The new approach that we present in this webinar is an integrated system level flow for 5G system design and simulation. 
In this approach, circuit, EM, and system simulators are offered as a reference, including RF, base bin, antenna, and entire physical layer system, and it helps engineers across the multiple disciplines. This integrated flow starts to form a system-level architecting and initial specification decision. Both Spacebane and RF team develop products in parallel with the various measurement results in prototype system verification phase. It can be utilized to enhance the initial architecture and both teams can do the cross-validation by using the tools introduced today. This approach will save your time and asset significantly. And if you want to get even more advanced, try to explore more KSI design engineering software and resources from the link. I'm Sang Shin at KSI EDA, and thanks for watching. Let's get back to the moderator for any questions. So thank you. Here's your first question from Talia. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the model-based design? Okay, I, I think many of the advantages are introduced during the presentation already, but um, it provides a common design environment which facilitates general communication and data analysis and system verification between various development teams. But on the other hand, Making physical model is a very time-consuming task and difficult to make a good agreement in between the measurement and the simulation. Okay, great. Thanks. Here's a question from Raymond. Can X parameters be used for hierarchical design of my nonlinear RF systems? Um, oh, yes. The X parameters enable a hierarchical nonlinear design flow. So. It is quite analogous to what is common practice for S parameters in the design of linear systems from linear components. For example, the X parameters of individual amplifier stages can be combined to produce a single X parameter representation of the cascaded structure. So this in is in turn can be combined with X parameters of a mixer or converters and and the entire front end of the RF nonlinear system and it can be hier hierarchically extracted and reused. Very good. Here's a question from Denis. Can you address intermodulation issue for the five G non standalone operation mode in this simulation environment? Um okay, yes, I think it's question about the ENDC. Yeah. There are specific band combinations in dual connectivity operation that raise intermodulation problem. So when uplink transmitters are turned on simultaneously for both LTE and new radio, actually its internally generated intermodulation product will jump into your receiver path and degrade the receiver performance. So if the IMD frequency is equivalent to the downlink victim carrier frequency, the situation even getting worse. So to address this type of issue, actually you need to analyze the power level of intermodulation products in your receiver chain and calculate cascaded noise figure using frequency domain simulator. And then this noise figure data should be applied to the time domain receiver sensitivity test simulation, like the one of the example that I introduced today. Okay, thanks. Here's your next question from Jay. We see a lot of pretty pictures of the beam forming, but what's the input? Yes, it's actually pretty, yeah. The input signal can be a simple CW tone and even modulated RF standard reference waveform and signals faded from wireless channel. So we use various type of signals to validate 5G communication systems, modules, and components for the different simulation scenario. So in general, CW tone is used for the frequency domain spectral analysis and beam measurement, while Modulated signals are used in time domain 
system level simulation. Okay, thanks. And here's a question from Andy. What technology developments are needed for millimeter wave 5G? Oh, this is really a good question. So the answer might be different depending on the technical area of interest. But in general, I would say they are the phase array and beam forming technologies. Though penetration loss is higher at these millimeter wave frequencies, as these frequencies cannot penetrate walls and certain objects in the buildings. There is a strong need of advanced beamforming system development using phase array IC. And then if I understand the question regarding the simulation technology, I would say they are the channel-specific RF impairment modeling technique. So due to the integration of multiple channels of the phase shifters and amplifiers and array antennas in the phase array system. Many designers have been asked to model this kind of the hardware imperfection per channel basis. Okay, thank you. Here's uh, your question, your next question from Christy. She asks, will millimeter small cells be required to implement 5G? Oh, definitely. I think this is a quite general 5G question rather than modeling, but the 5G will also be used in higher frequencies, which don't travel as far and don't travel as well through obstacles, such as buildings so prevalent in concrete jungles. So this means the mobile network operator must install the 5G radio, and a lot of them closer to the end users. So small cell won't be required day one, as they can be installed over time. And most of the models that we looked at today are applicable for your millimeter wave small cell development. Mm -hmm. And here is a question from Clyde. Could you elaborate about the low dependency of the models that you uh, show today? Yeah, actually, I talked about the low dependency, frequency dependency, and DC dependence. Um, yes, about the low dependency. Traditionally, the load pool has been the measurement methodology of choice for optimized power delivered and power added efficiency. However, the classic load pool does not provide sufficient information to design and optimize multi-stage amplifiers, where accurate input to output phase and scheduled wave, including harmonics at the input ports are required. So by enabling X parameter measurement to work seamlessly with automatic tuners, the X parameters systematically solve these problems and provide a much more comprehensive component information immediately. And normally they are usable in the circuit simulator for nonlinear design. I, w I would like to say that the data is the model. <laughs> Great. Here's a, here's a question from Simone. What do you have to know to simulate the whole communication system in time domain? What is the key technique connecting frequency domain RF models into time domain simulation? Oh, this is a really, really great question. Well, the simple answer is that the modeling of an um, RF path in the time domain is done by extracting behavioral data that characterize the path in terms of its frequency response and uh, nonlinear behavior, and also the thermal noise and phase noise performance. And using this data to create an equivalent data flow network in time domain. And then the analysis for an ARP signal is bandpass band pass signal centered at the ARP signal carrier frequency, more typically called 
the OREP characterization frequency. And here's a question from Matteo. Is there a link between limited design exploration and bad architecture? Yeah, for sure, yes. Mm, it is more important when the system complexity is, is high. And I have been working with many architects that strictly use a physical model making to inform their design decisions. For example, the 5G hybrid beamforming architectures compared to the analog and digital. And the other example is the split IF architecture of the mobile device supporting millimeter wave frequency. And another example is the kind of RF front, front end design for full duplex communication system and etc. So the good system architecture always comes out with uh, many different types of uh, design exploration, I believe. Great. And uh, here's your last question from Roberto. You covered many different areas from antenna, circuit, and system, which need different types of tools. What kind of software did you use? <laughs> okay, well, well, this is not a product introduction event, but Tech Hacker Seminar today. Then. I didn't introduce the tools what I've used for the research, but I'm really, really happy to answer the question. I used EM Pro for the antenna EM simulation, and ADS and Golden Gate for circuit design, and then combined all the hardware extracted models at the system view. So um, the main reason of using this tool is I can get them free here. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank you for attending today's webinar brought to you by Keysight Technologies. Join us next month for the continuation of our engineering education webinar series and enjoy your day.